So David, uh, based on our previous conversations, <clears throat> I'd say it's safe to say that you're kind of on a bit of a quest right now. You're on a quest to unlock the good life or well, right. your version of the, the good life at any rate. Absolutely. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Which, you know, I, I've heard you describe as having the freedom to hit the road with your wife and work from exotic remote locations and more or less just experience life in the world that we live in in previously unavailable ways. And I got to admit, yeah. That sounds pretty good to me. It sounds like a reality. It's actually not too far off for you. Absolutely. Yeah. W within the next 12 months, I, I fully expect my wife and I to um, be working from a mountaintop one week and, and a beach the next. Absolutely. That's awesome. So what I'd like to do uh, before we get to that, you know, the, the what's next uh, thing for you, yeah. I'd like to maybe go back, wind the clock back a little bit and use today's episode as a place where you can kind of tell your story. Um, and take us back to what your journey looked like before you even started using WordPress to where you're at today. Uh, does that sound good? Sounds great. All right, cool. So let's start by just having you tell us a bit about your background. You know, where are you from? Where did you go to school? What did you do before WordPress? You know, that kind of thing. Gotcha. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm from a very small town in South Louisiana, uh, Ville Platte, Louisiana. It's French for flat town. Uh, I live in the heart of Acadiana, which is consists of 13 parishes which actually make up the Cajun culture. You may have heard of it. Um, great food, best food in the world in my opinion, great people. In fact, where I live, Lafayette, we were just voted the happiest city in America. So if you ever want to come to the happiest city, come on down and visit with me and I'll, I'll show you a good time. Um, I graduated high school, left the small town, um, did a little bit of traveling around, wandering for a couple of years, came back in my early 20s, went to LSU for computer science, fully expected to go down the path of network administrator, um, tested out, did the CNEs, uh, MCSEs, which are Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer, and the back then Novell was a big platform that was used. And I'm, I'm not really sure if it's that big anymore or even relevant, but it was then, so I, I got the CN, CNE as well. And, and never went into computers. <laughs> got out of school and got married and had children and went into sales. Uh, opened up a company on my own in 2000 and had it for 10 years. I worked in the newspaper industry and obviously the internet has kind of slowed down the newspaper yeah, industry. Yeah, a little so, bit. A little bit. Yeah. No big deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Their, their budgets dried up 2000, November 1st, 2009. Uh, my last contract with the newspapers ended. And, you know, I found myself at a, at a point in life where I had to make some decisions. And while I was figuring out what it, what it was that I wanted to do, um, one of the companies that I contracted with for 10 years wanted to employ me full time because I had, had been with them for a while and I, I guess I did a good job for them. I worked with them for three years, really wasn't happy. Uh, I think I'm much more suited for self-employment. I have a very entrepreneurial spirit, you know, so I wanted to, um, you know, just get out there and explore some things. And I had been involved with a very successful website in the 90s that me and some friends put together uh, that actually got a tremendous amount of traffic. And we probably, um, you know, we're, were a little naive, missed the boat. You know, I look back, hindsight being 2020, you know, I think, oh my gosh, man, we could have really been big time. Uh, we, it was a gaming website. Uh, we ended up, we had forums that were extremely engaged very active, much like a, a Facebook user group that we'll probably talk about a little bit later on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, very engaged. We ended up with, you know, a million unique visitors a month, 17 million page views, which was a tremendous amount of traffic. And we had about 200 volunteers from around the world that would work on the site. And we all did it for free. Uh, you may or may not be young enough to remember this or, or too young to remember this, but I actually had a T1 line in my home, you know, back then a, a T1 was blazing fast when we only had ISDN, you know, 52K modems. You know, a T1 was 1.5 megs up and down. And it, it cost quite a bit of money. I think we and used those back in the day for our quake parties back yeah, when I was young. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 we did that as well. I've been to QuakeCon, in fact. Yeah. <laughs> Nathan, um, um, 
oh gosh, what's his name? Fatality. Jonathan Wendell is a friend of mine. Oh we really? Used to, we used to game. You know, I don't, I don't know how big you were in Quake back then, but but Jonathan Wendell was the world champion in Quake. He was the guy. I wasn't I wasn't that into it, but I was into it. <laughs> I was. I, I'd go to QuakeCon in Dallas because Dallas is not too far from here. Yeah, that's so, awesome. You know, that kind of got me intrigued in the web. I absolutely loved it. I've so that always... was that was before your sales days, right? Yes, yeah. that was so, pre, pre-sales days. So you Sorry. had that kind of rattling around in the back of your head. Absolutely. You're doing the sales job. Were, were you unhappy with the sales job? Or was it just uh, something that you were doing and it wasn't good or bad? It was just what you were doing. I, it I, wasn't good or bad. It was what I was doing at the time. Looking back on it now, I would say, yes, I was unhappy. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know it. It wasn't. I, I did not have the passion that I have now for what I'm doing. So, what piqued your interest about WordPress? I mean, <clears throat> you were doing the sales job. I mean, you, sounds like it was you know paying the bills for you. So, what got you playing around with WordPress? Well, I, as I said, I went back to work for a company full time, and I really wasn't happy. <clears throat> so, you know, being familiar with the internet and always believing that there. The power of the internet was was amazing and its abilities. You know, you're going to kind of laugh about this. You're asking me about WordPress, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I got into WordPress. Um, you know, I sold digital products for the local paper here in Lafayette. It was owned by Gannett, and that's you know the company that I I went to work for full time. Um, you know, so I, I felt like I had a really good grasp on the marketing aspect. I saw where the trends were going, the net was going, and I really felt like you know, social media was where it was going to be at for businesses. And that's where they needed to, uh, that's where they needed to be. You know, Mm -hmm. they didn't need to have websites anymore. (laughs) Um, They needed to only have Facebook, Twitter. These, these platforms were free. Yes, they did know how to need to know how to use them. However, um, I just felt like, you know what, you know, websites are obsolete. No one needs them anymore. Um, I laugh at it now. I look back and I think, oh, my goodness. I had a personal friend of mine. His name was Phil, Dr. Phil Myers. He was a retired dentist, and he's a children's author. And I was helping him with his social media campaigns, um, trying to get his name out there. He just wanted to you know, promote and sell his children's books. Mm-hmm. So for whatever reason, the more research that I did in investigating how I could help him the most, you know, this little thought kept coming in the back of my mind. It's like, he should blog. He should blog. You know, it kept coming to me and I just would tell him, I said, Phil, I just, you know, for whatever reason, everything that I'm reading, I feel like nobody knows who you are. We live in Lafayette, Louisiana. We're in a very small town in a, in a, in a small section of the country. Nobody knows you're here. We need to try to get your name out there. So why don't you start writing some stuff and, you know, let's put together a blog for you. So I started researching what the best way to do that was and I came across WordPress and I found that it was free so when I installed the first WordPress platform I was absolutely blown away because I had some experience from designing and building websites in the 90s I thought (laughs) holy cow you know I instantly saw the power of WordPress yeah I was blown away with what you could do with it even at my level of disconnect for you know, at least 12 or 13 years, you know, it was just amazing to me. I felt, I I just was, I was blown away by it. That's awesome. And, uh, what were some of your, so you, you, you created that blog for your friend. Um, and was that, was that a paid gig? Was that something you were just doing for, for fun or to help out? Well, I guess you could say it was a paid gig because he was paying me for the social media aspect of it. Okay, okay. Um, And I felt like that was, but I I didn't specifically say, hey, I'm going to build you a website and this is what it's going to cost. I didn't charge him any more than I was charging him initially. Gotcha. Which was was an annual agreement to handle his social media stuff. Cool. And so uh, what year was that, by the way? That was in 2013. Okay. When I started doing the social media stuff. Um... Yeah, and it, it, 2013, latter end, latter part of 2013. So you got involved latter end of 2013. Did you do? You know, that's actually not too uh, far or too too long after um, Divi was released. Was right. did you basically discover Divi more or less right away, or did you do some WordPress jobs without Divi? To, at the I beginning? did. 
I, I believe it or not, I cut my teeth on Genesis and Thesis were the two platforms that I was using because I, I'm a researcher. You know, I want to know what platforms, what was the best platform. And mm -hmm. from everything that I read SEO wise, Genesis was really geared towards, you know, it was SEO friendly. Uh, search engines liked it. It was built into the platform. So th that's what I built my first few websites on was Genesis. Thesis, not, I played around with it a little bit, but I ended up never completely finishing a site with Thesis. I went straight with, um, just went with Genesis. Okay. And um, what were some of those first websites like? I mean, did was the production process fast? You know, did you... <laughs> Um, struggle through it or you know yeah I guess which what was it like in general yeah it was um, <clears throat> I would say that I, I I probably struggled through it um, it wasn't something that I could not overcome um, I enjoyed it so much and I was um, so excited about doing it and finding out new things that I could do that it really was never a chore for me uh, the first client in latter part of 2013, paying client, was actually a municipality. And, um, you know, I met a guy in a coffee shop. You know, what are you doing? Strike up a conversation. And I said, well, I'm just kind of, uh, I'm putting together a plan for a, a website that I'm putting together for a friend. And that's just kind of what I'm doing. He says, really? He says, well, I'm on a board in this this town that's about 20 minutes north of us in mm -hmm. Opelousas and says, you know, it, it's a water board and we need a website. Can you come talk to the board? And I said, okay, I, I'm telling you, my business started in a coffee shop, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine quite a few web developers' biz businesses start in a coffee shop. Yeah. Uh, but, but I built that on Genesis. And, um, I, I, you know, I feel like it was unique. Uh, they love the site. It's still up today. I still manage it for them. Um, I hope to, in the near future, switch it over to Divi because, you know, I went back and built a site with Genesis here recently, a real estate site, mm -hmm. and it is a thousand times more cumbersome than working with Divi. So, sorry, Genesis, you know, hey, Brian, nothing personal, you know, just <laughs> where I'm at, you know, if you watch this podcast or listen to this podcast, I love Genesis, great product. But but I have really found that Divi is um, a phenomenal platform. I can maneuver with it so fast, m much faster than I can on any other platform. So on in our emails, getting ready for this talk, you you gave me like an exact date that you discovered Divi. You said it was January six, twenty fourteen, yeah. and I thought yeah. that's very specific. Uh, did you know like right away when you started using it, this was like a game changer for you? I think so. Yeah, absolutely. It was a game changer for me because I was still learning CSS. Um, PHP was a was a was not even in my realm of you know um, grasping completely. I was just focusing on trying to learn as much CSS as I could so that I could manipulate and mm -hmm. style and modify the websites the way that I wanted. Well, when I found Divi, you know, and Divi two point four is you know, like steroids compared to what it was back then. But when I found Divi, I, you know, I did not have, to, I didn't find the need to use as much programming languages to style. I could pull things right out of the box, you know, that where I would have used to have had to try to inspect element, find, mm -hmm. you know, figure out the CSS, modify the code. Now, I did a lot of that with Divi you know, o over over the time. However, I didn't find that I had to do it if I didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. So I hope that answers your question. Yes. I mean, and it also sounds like uh, if for no other reason than it boosted your confidence in terms of volume that you could handle, um, it was, it was you know, a game changer in that sense. What, what, Absolutely. What did it do for your volume? Oh, it, well, it, it allowed me to produce websites at a much faster pace. Um, whereas Divi had the, the drag and drop, you know, the builder, which mm -hmm. is in the Divi builder, um, which if you've ever used Divi, you're familiar with it. Yeah. Um, I was able to save layouts, you know, rapidly, you know, save layouts that I thought really good, reuse CSS, you know, as it applied to specific modules and stuff, sliders, I could repurpose all of this information and it just kind of, 
helped me with with moving things forward much faster. Divi had it built into the platform itself with the ability to save those those all all of that information. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, it sounds like you know you you had a lot of momentum going at this point. Um, what was it like? taking that momentum into a group like the Divi theme users Facebook group or did you have it did they help you get it I I guess that's uh, that's also part of the question is you know what role did did that group play in this early stage in in your using Divi that that group was um, paramount in my business Um, I, I would say that the group was a very large part of the real explosion of my business that was to come that I didn't even know. I had had went along with what a one person could do, you know, searching the web, using Google, you know, trying to find the solutions to the problems that I had. And all of a sudden, you know, I, I, I was using Divi regularly. I was reading y'all's blog posts. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's actually how I found the, the Divi theme users group. Um, Eileen Lonergan had posted in you know, as a, in a comment saying, oh, okay. "Hey, I've created this Facebook group. You know, for Divi. If you're interested, come on over." And I was uh, one of the first hundred members of the group. Went over there and and just found this camaraderie in this community of people. You know, self-employed people, do-it-yourselfers, novice web developers, all the way to full-blown professionals. And they were just helping each other out. So if I had a question, I could pose it and. You know, it would be answered within a few minutes. You know, I would yeah. have the solution to the problem. Well, it also gave me the confidence, you know, in talking with other developers and stuff. It just boosted my confidence. There wasn't anything that I didn't feel like I couldn't achieve for a client. So it allowed me to take on larger, more complicated projects, you know, whereas before I probably wouldn't have until I felt comfortable mm-hmm. enough with my own abilities and stuff. But I felt like I had a built-in team that was just there. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. It sounds kind of bad, but, you know, because I'm charging clients and I probably should be, you know, spiffing the Facebook <laughs> group or something. But I think we were all kind of, it's it's kind of been that way. That's um, awesome. I, I've seen that group launch many people's web design careers. I've seen people with full-time jobs take the step, you know, step out in faith and are full-blown web design. That, that's what they do today. That's how they support and feed their family. Um, I attest that to Divi. I attest that to the Facebook group. Divi's, a, a, my opinion, the most powerful WordPress platform out, theme out there. I don't, I don't use it as a theme, haven't in a long time. Mm. I've used it as a framework for quite a while. Yeah, yeah. And uh, earlier you said, you know, that when it came to WooCommerce, you were terrified Oh yeah, and and getting to use Divi for a while, jumping into the Facebook group, all these things, having some successful clients, all these things boosted right. your confidence to the point where you were ready to start taking on some, uh, I guess, more complicated clients and more complicated projects. Tell us about FlipTales.com and what happened with that site. Yeah, this this was a client that um, you know I'm gonna digress just a hair if sure. you don't mind. Uh, won't take but a second, but I I want to mention. Um, someone who's been working with me for over a year, and we met in the Divi Facebook group. His name is Kalyan Brontas Das. He is from India. Um, he is one of the most kind, humble, uh, helpful, knowledgeable people that I've met. Uh, I feel like we're probably kindred spirits from across the world because we're we're very much alike in the way that we see things and we do things. Um, he, you know. We started working together shortly before FlipTail, so I really have to not only give myself or Facebook group the credit, I also have to give him some credit because he is the one who, with his knowledge of PHP and CSS and his skill set, it allowed me to go after more complex projects and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I had a client that came to me who was a college student. And um, his name was Daniel Gould. He had just graduated from the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. Go Cajuns. <laughs> um, <laughs> he, he was an artist and um, an extremely talented artist. He came to me with this idea. And he said, David, he said, I'd like to build a website and I want to sell some products. And here's my product. He said, 
Um, I have been researching and I've gone back to the year 2000 and I figured out the top four, to, 200 boys and the top 200 girls names for, for newborn children in the United States of America all the way back to the year 2000 and I figured out which animals I could turn their name into. And so he's, he's an artist and he, he designed these flip books to where you know, my name is David, by the way, it turns into a peregrine falcon, which I think is pretty <laughs> awesome, by the way. That is pretty cool. <laughs> um, um, and, and he just figured it out. And he said, you know what, this is what I want to do. Um, you know, can you help me? And I said, sure, absolutely. And I was up front with them and I let them know, you know, um, you know, the platform that I was going to use was WordPress and that I was going to use WooCommerce because it was the most popular, you know, platform at to use for WordPress and he said no problem we put a plan together and we started building the site so we built it with Divi we launched it in late November December the first week of December we had a, um, a marketing plan we felt like you know if we could if we could get some interest in his products that they were unique enough that maybe we could get it to go viral so we were thinking Reddit and Imgur were the two platforms that we were going to go after if you're familiar with Imgur, Ember's images and yeah. videos, it's it's where a lot of them go, actually go viral. Our goal was is if you make it to the front page of Imgur, you're going to probably go viral. So we had a plan. Uh, we launched his website on a Monday. We had a plan to, on Friday, roll out our Imgur campaign. And, you know, Thursday I went fishing in the Gulf of Mexico because, you know, I live on the Gulf of Mexico and <laughs> redfish and speckled trout are awesome. Um, so I'm in the, in the middle of the, you know, ocean, basically, <laughs> you know, fishing, and I've got my phone with me, and I get a call from Daniel, and Daniel says, Dave, he says, uh, uh, I went ahead and launched the Imgur campaign, and it looks like it's going to go viral. It, you know, I'm watching the numbers, and the upvotes on, on, on my, my post are just, they're going through the roof. It's at, you know, this many views now, and I'm like, Dude, I'm I'm out in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. You know, this is not the right time to do this. So, um, I upgraded the server from my cell phone. Here's the power of Divi, WordPress, and technology. I'm on my cell phone in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. I update, I upgrade my web server to a higher platform instantly within a few minutes on, on a managed VPS. I went from the lowest level to the top level within a couple of seconds increased the, its performance so it could handle it, um, made sure that everything was operating correctly with the, with the website and WooCommerce. Uh, orders started coming in. We had 500,000 views in our first day. Wow. Um, so he, he knocked it out of the park. I'm going to tell you that Divi and WooCommerce never even flinched. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, let's talk about some of the partners that you've made. I mean, you've made okay. some really uh, beneficial allies within Absolutely. the Divi community. Yeah. Um, I'm specifically thinking of Eileen Lonergan and Andrew Palmer, who are your right. co-founders over at Elegant right. Marketplace. Um, what has it meant to find and team up with these kind of like-minded people um, for you and your business? Uh, i found that it has been just a, a really, really huge asset. You know, um, one way to think about, you know, your mindset and your way of thinking about things is one thing. But when you have perspective of people that you trust and you value, who are, who are peers that are doing similar things to where you're doing, mm -hmm. when you can put your minds together as a cooperative, it, it's really, really phenomenal. It's, it's amazing at what you actually can achieve. Um, I do feel really, really blessed um, to have met Eileen and Andrew. Mm -hmm. um, they are fantastic business partners. We launched uh, elegantmarketplace.com, as you said, yep. you know, in, in the beginning, it was a, um, a, a place for child themes, plugins, courses, uh, services. You know, that's kind of the direction of, of um, what we thought in our mind. Uh, we launched it in April. Um, we, we've We've built it around the community, the Divi Facebook group. Um, we feel like we're servicing a, you know, something that that they're asking for. They're hungering for, you know, learning how to 
you do CSS, do PHP, do WooCommerce. So we do a lot of tutorials. We do a lot of blog posts geared towards that. Um, we've we've met and collaborated with a lot of developers in the community and stuff that build child themes to make you know do-it-yourselfers lives a whole lot easier. You know mm -hmm. when they can come in and you know pop in a restaurant theme. You know much like WordPress is built on. Period. Yeah. There are so many child theme developers and stuff out there, um, but we have, you know, I, I just think it, it, it's been a phenomenal, it's been a really, really good experience for me. So that sounds amazing. And the success you've seen in your professional life is actually starting to unlock some bigger dreams that you've had, which we talked about right. earlier, for how you want to lead your life in other areas. Right. Uh, so can you kind of tell us about what that realization was like where you got to a point where you're like, oh my gosh, you know what? I don't have to do life like I used to have to do life. Right. You know, what was yeah. that like? Well, it, it's good. I've, I've always kind of been a, um, I don't know, a outside of the box thinker, willing to, you know, take a, a step forward when most people probably wouldn't take a step forward. Mm -hmm. um, you know, living life a little bit differently, you know, appeals to me. Um, Free spirit, whatever you want to call it. My wife is a very, very traditional. She's a CPA. You know, yep. she is a bean counter, and <laughs> you know, her life is very. You know, you do this, this, and this, and you know, we've talked about uh, about doing some things for a while now, for a few years. Actually, it kind of spawned from, um, you know, we purchased an RV leased a spot on a lake for a year, absolutely fell in love, found out that it was something that we really, really enjoyed. Um, that's kind of what, what spurred on, you know, the idea of living life potentially a little bit differently, mm -hmm. you know, and me feeling like there's n nowhere that I can not work from. You know, yeah. um, I've convinced her that there's that she can work from anywhere as well. We're going to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, you guys know? have your electric and Wi-Fi uh, logistics, you know, figured out? Or are you still trying to? Yeah, yeah? yeah we, we do. We're, we're figuring it out. Okay. Uh, I've been okay. I've been investigating it for a little while. You, you would be surprised, you know, um, you know, with with cell phone, you know, LTE is a very fast, you know. Yeah internet provider and stuff. I don't know if you know this or not, but satellite just just came out with spot satellite. You used to have to be um, you know, plugged into the same place and your satellite shooting into, but they've now come out with what's called spot satellite service to where you can move around the country and have satellite Wi-Fi in the oh, most re rem remote areas in the country even without a cell phone signal you no longer need it. Now you know, is it feasible? You know, a hundred dollars a month for twenty gigabytes of data. Mm, you're probably not. You know, you're probably going to go through that data pretty quickly. But there are several different options that you can that that you have. Well, when you're out on the road, you're going to keep us up to date. Absolutely, yeah. We're going <laughs> to. Um, you know, I, I'll expound a little bit more on it. Um, you know, we are going to hopefully within the next twelve months. We're investigating RVs, and I'm, you know, uh, we're looking at really nice something that we can live in on a full-time basis, something that we can travel around in, um, you know, go to the beach for a month, go to the mountaintop for a a, a month or two, wherever we want to work from. That's what we want to do. We want to experience some life, um, and I feel like, you know, Divi, WordPress, web development, all has given, you know, open our minds up to the ability to do that, to feel like we can do it. That's awesome. Well, yeah. at the end of each interview, I like to ask for a parting thought. Um, uh -huh. I like to, you know, obviously you've, uh, you've had your own experience, your own journey that's kind of unlocked uh, your idea of the good life. And there's other people in the community who are trying to pursue success to a level where they can unlock, you know, their version of that. Um, that's going to look, that specific thing is going to look different to everybody, but the principles of just being successful in this industry are probably always going to stay the same um, to one degree or another. So to that end, is there like one lesson that you learned or one tip that you have for people looking to um, find a level of success with WordPress and Divi that you'd want them, if they didn't take anything else away from, from our talk and from your experience, what's that one thing that you'd want them to walk away with? Well, I don't know that this is anything paramount or unique, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. But what I, what I would encourage them to do is to find a community. Find a community of like-minded people that they can bounce their ideas off of and get help with. Um, because that, that one thing has absolutely changed my business model, the way that I think about things, has helped me more than I could have ever even imagined exponentially it has sped up the process what would have taken i had a five-year plan you Mm -hmm. know and my five-year plan got pushed up to two years because of the community and wordpress of what i'm talking about so find some people you know if you're lost if if if, if you 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 mess with divi a lot and you really like divi but you're kind of confused and you have some questions come join us in the divi theme users group Mm -hmm. there's a lot of people there that are going to help you that are willing to give their time and energy and share their experience with you and it doesn't cost you anything now you can you, you need something more complex than that absolutely you can find them there as well so that's kind of the the, the message that i would give them great that sounds like a good uh, parting thought to me david right. thanks for coming on the show really appreciate it hey nathan thank you very much for having me what a great story. Uh, I want to thank David again for coming on the show. I really enjoyed hearing his story, and I hope the rest of you out there in Divi Nation did too. Uh, before we move on, I'm happy to report that in the time since we recorded, David actually sold his house, and he and his wife are preparing for life on the road. He's promised to keep us up to date on this new chapter in his life, and I'm really looking forward to learning about what running a Divi-centered business from the road looks like. Don't forget, if you're watching this video on YouTube or Facebook, take a moment to subscribe, follow, like, and or share. It really helps. Thanks.